1077 The Pulse, 1073 WEMJ. It is, in fact, Kale and Company for a Thursday. And our health coach, Carol Phillips, is here. Carol, good afternoon to you. Hey, Ken, how are you? I am doing very well. I mean, uh, you know, we get to spend all last week and a little bit of this week in Florida, so no Lucky complaints. Man. No Lucky complaints. Man. Yes. Whatsoever. Your, your I, bones are all thawed. It's the longest I've ever been down there. You know, I used to have to come back sometimes early. Uh, mm-hmm. Because of hockey commitments, but since I don't have those anymore, at least at the professional level, uh, you know, I'm back. Yes. A little bit later than normal, but uh, glad to be back. That's awesome. It's and, a beautiful time. I'd love to go time. down, you know, next week sometime. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Again. Yeah, it's a beautiful time of year to be in Florida. It is. You know, we had 80 degree weather every day we were down there. Nice. Every single day. Nice. Yeah, you know? March and October, I find, are like the perfect beach weather without being too muggy. And you know what? I I really didn't sit on the beach at all. It was all work. It was hard work, Carol. (laughs) It was hard work, but somebody had to do it. That's the story, and you're sticking to it. That's right. (laughs) I'm trying to picture that. As false as it might be, yes, I'm sticking to it. But uh, at any rate, great to see you. You too. And uh, Carol, of course, the author of the uh, double award-winning book, 52 Simple Ways to Health. And uh, I don't know if there's a third award on the way or not, but uh, (laughs) let me know if there is. Uh, But, uh, Carol, you've uh, brought a guest along today. I have, and I'm I'm excited. Uh, We're going to have a great conversation today. Um, Just want to update on a couple things first, and then we'll bring her into the conversation. Um, I wanted to remind the listeners that uh, Health Design has a full-day safety training coming up at Manchester Community College Um, It's called Safety Training, The Total Package. It's going to be held on Friday, March 29th from 8 a.m. to 4.15 p.m. And it will include American Heart Association CPR AED, first aid, first responder skills, effective communication, mock drills, and lunch. Oh, well, (laughs) you saved the best for last. (laughs) Yeah, lunch is included. So, you know, if you um, have any employees that you want to have them come in and be certified and learn how to respond effectively during an emergency that can reduce your workers' compensation claims, reduce risk of liability, and save lives, um, send them over for this training. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, Just go to askcoachcarol.com. Right on the home page is the link. Uh, once again, it's askcoachcarol.com, or you can call me directly at 603-321-2750. And then I also wanted to announce that Health Design is now working with Bentley Commons at Bedford to offer seminars to healthcare professionals who are looking to obtain their CEUs. So if you're a healthcare professional, you're looking to get your continuing ed credits, come join our upcoming seminar It's scheduled for Wednesday, March 20th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. at Bentley Commons in Bedford. To register, call Bentley Commons' main number, which is 603-644-2200, and refreshments will be served. Always food. Always food. I have to have the food there. (laughs) Um, And the topic is going to be positive communication. Outstanding. Yep, so. Outstanding. We yeah. try to communicate positively every day here on the show. As we much, do. As much as we can. We do. Yeah. We, I think we keep it pretty positive and We happy, have to keep it positive. Which is a good thing. Got to be positive. Yes. Exactly. Too much negativity in the world. Uh, we need to true. escape. Escape. All right. Every once in a while, we have a little negativity on the show. But <laughs> and then I leave, right? Not very often. Not <laughs> <laughs> You're not here when it happens. Yeah. That's <laughs> <enough>. <laughs> J Dog is. Is he, it fun? Because I'll just he, have to he, stick He tolerates around. it from time to time. <laughs> okay. He tolerates it. No. I've been taking this for 35 years. Yeah. You know? What's well, another day? <laughs> What's another day? What's another day? <laughs> oh, you guys are fun. So, anyways, today's topic, I'm really excited. Uh, we're going to be talking about working together to help our community. And you know, I love our nonprofits in the area, and I love volunteer work. Um, and anything that brings community nonprofits together. So today's special guest is Kat Strange, communi- uh, Communications Director for Waypoint, formerly, which is formerly known as Child and Family Services of New Hampshire. More people might recognize that until we get used to the, the new name, but we're going to be talking about that today, too, is the rebranding. So uh, welcome, Kat. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. So before we get started in some of the things that you do to help the community, can you give us a little background on exactly what Waypoint offers and the whole rebranding, which is really exciting? Sure, sure. Well, 
Uh, Waypoint is actually a 169-year-old agency. We were born in 1850. Uh, For the past 50 or so years, though, people in New Hampshire have known us as Child and Family Services of New Hampshire, a private nonprofit. Um, We are often confused with the state, though, because of our name, and and so we always had to make that distinction that we're not a government agency, we're a private nonprofit. Um, And we have grown over the years to have a footprint that's across the state and to provide services that help people at every age and stage of life. So we have everything from um, child abuse prevention, intervention and treatment, um, early supports and services, which helps children who have developmental delays, uh, services for children who have chronic health conditions, um, family counseling, uh, individual and group counseling, behavioral health counseling, um, mental health services. Uh, we also have runaway and homeless youth programs, a summer camp. Uh, we have services, um, after school programs for adjudicated youth, you know, try to kind of keep them out of trouble, get them back on track. And then all the way up to our senior years, we have a home care program that helps senior citizens remain comfortable and safe in their own homes as long as they choose to do so. We also have an advocacy program, which sort of puts our agency in the catbird seat when it comes to solving social problems. Um, We have boots on the ground, you know, our practitioners in the field, but then to have someone at the legislative level helping to shape public policies that affect the way kids are are protected and their their well-being, their long-term well-being, um, that's key to our success. Yes, and it takes a village. Take it a does take a village, yeah. right? Yes, it does. Can't do it alone. Yes. We do it in partnership with a ton of other wonderful nonprofits in New Hampshire. That's And I love that. I love the fact that the nonprofits are starting to do a lot more partnering with each other. Yeah. Um, because to me, that's just an absolute win-win. Yeah. So you cover all ages. Yeah. And we were talking earlier before we went on the air about how um, you end up you know, about the name, why yeah. you chose the name, what it means. Can you tell us a little bit more yeah. about that? So for many years, we've been talking about, um, you know, with our old name, we spent more of our time explaining who we're not rather than who we are. You know, we're not the state. We're not the state. Yes. So and also um, over the years, our, our programs um, grew to serving more than just little children and just families. Um, you know, when we're talking about 19-year-old homeless youth, they may not see themselves reflected in that name. Right. Senior citizens who probably don't have anyone left in their lives, and, and they don't really see themselves reflected in the name. So we thought, why not have something that's um, not exclusive uh, of populations, um, and that is, it, it feels a little more relevant to the work that we do. So we did a lot of research, a lot of polling. Um, we talked to all of our constituencies from our clients to volunteers to donors and staff members and so forth and our community partners and uh, put our finger on the pulse of the community to find out um, what they were thinking, how they were feeling about us and what direction we should go with our new name. So we came up with the name Waypoint and that it's kind of a nautical term and it means points in time along a journey when you have to change course. And we thought how perfect that was because that's what we do, is we're in people's lives at points in time on their journey when something needs to change. And so we thought that made perfect sense. Why have a name that tries to say everyone we serve when we could have a name that better reflects the part we play in people's lives? Right, absolutely. That sounds perfect. And so what organizations tend to refer to you? Which ones do you work most closely with? Well, you know, we work with organizations all throughout the state, um, you know, a ton of other nonprofits. We, we link arms with everyone from Families in Transition to New mm-hmm. Horizons to Easter Seals, VNA. Because um, I'm sure most people don't find you, or correct me if I'm wrong, they don't find you on their own. They don't, they don't they're at this turning point in their life and they say, oh, I'm going to call Waypoint. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. do they get more often referred by somebody else? Well, um, very often, yes. Um, But the thing about our programs is many of them are court-referred programs. Mm -hmm. So meaning the clients come to us through a Mm -hmm. systems-referred system. So the courts or um, juvenile protection officers or um, child protective social workers, they will make the referral. Um, So uh, that's probably almost three quarters of our programs. And then the rest are voluntary programs. They could look us up, Google us, and, mm-hmm. you know, mental health counseling is a voluntary program, summer camp, you know, nice. um, and uh, or home care, you know. Um, but uh, 
you know, very often we do refer to each other. We also get referrals from schools, uh, from law enforcement, um, you know, uh, health care facilities, mm-hmm. hospitals. So yeah. can you give us a couple of examples of um, people at a turning point where you see the most need right now? Uh, well, you know, right now we are sort of at a critical juncture in Manchester specifically, but certainly around the state, um, with youth homelessness. And uh, there's a big gap in services for mm-hmm. that population. We always hear about homelessness, um, and there are many different kinds of homelessness. And um, we, pic- we tend to picture adults. And you picture adults, um, and and you always feel as though for little children there are other systems in place, foster care and so forth. But you have that sort of gap where young people, especially between 18 and 23, Um, They're not little kids, Mm -hmm. and yet they probably don't have all the tools they need to be independent adults. Right. Um, And they find themselves homeless, whether it's that they were aging out of foster care or um, they were kicked out of their home for whatever reason. Perhaps it was an abusive environment, a neglectful environment. Um, And they're just not equipped. And yeah, Yeah. and they don't have anywhere to go. And, and, And that looks like... Many different things as well. It's not always somebody you see in a tent by the river. Mm-hmm. Um, very often, you don't know that you could be walking by homeless youth every day. You see them walking down the street with backpacks right. on, just like every kid. Right. You know, they wear big backpacks when they come come and go. You know, to school. Um, they may still be going to school. They just might not have a stable place to sleep at night, mm-hmm. and they might not really know where their next meal is coming from. So there's a lot of instability there, uh, and they're at great risk. And there's a true lack of services across the state. And our state leaders are stepping up, and they're trying to help us fix that, mm-hmm. you know, fill the gaps, um, build prevention services, you know, and, and, um, and it, you know, find out what is needed that will really create not just immediate um, s- critical services, you know, to address urgent need, but sustainable long-term change. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Well, that reminds me that there was... Um, a major study that was done, and they were asking um, college freshmen, I believe it was focused on, what do you wish you had known that you don't know, you didn't know when you got here? Mm -hmm. And I think this is kind of sad. The number one answer was life skills. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we need to do a a better job as a community to teach kids while they're growing up, mm-hmm. the life skills. So when they are 18, 19, 20, right. they are, you know, prepared to yeah. get out there and work and take care of themselves and know how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and it, it's true. You think about raising funds. It's sort of easier to raise funds when you have a problem people can see right in front of them and address that problem and want to fix it. They want to ride to the rescue. It's harder when you say, well, let's head that problem off at the pass and invest in prevention. Right. Exactly. That's harder. It actually. is. Actually. But yet. It's common sense. That That's more sensible. Yes. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. I yeah. see a, a staggering statistic that uh, you provided, Kat, that 50 percent of youth uh, aging out of foster care and juvenile justice systems will be homeless Within six months, yeah. that's pretty staggering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, well, you know, I I got a few other statistics that'll blow your mind too. Uh, if I'm you sure. want to hear some I'm about sure. this, yes. I'm sure. Okay, yes. you want to hear Feel some? Free to okay. share. Yeah. Here's here's a, a fact for you: one in ten youth, ages eighteen to twenty five. Now, this is according to a national study that came out last year, at the end of last year. Um, one in ten youth, eighteen to twenty five, will be homeless in a year's time. Mm. Wow. One in thirty youth, thirteen to seventeen years old will find themselves homeless. Uh, they'll endure some form of homelessness in a year. So it could be couch surfing or yeah. in right. a tent on the street. Right. Um, there's 1.3 million homeless youth across the country now, um, you know, who are who are living on the streets of America. Wow. And hard to believe, but um, it's a fact. Um, our agency serves an average of 1,500 homeless and runaway youth in a wow. year's time. Wow. Not all at the same time, mm-hmm. um, sometimes for very short periods of time and at various levels of homelessness. Right. Um, but nonetheless, they're at great risk. And that's way too big a number. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, I could go on with a few other statistics. Uh, there's a lot of math involved here, but I'll just give you a, a couple of things. Um, people always ask us how it is that youth end up homeless. Uh, and, and of course, there's many reasons. Not everybody's story is the same. Um, but, you know, very often it has to do with parental substance misuse, um, uh, chronic poverty, generational poverty, and the family just can't kind of get out of its own way. And um, so our uh, latest studies show that 50% of parents kicked their kids out of the home or the kids left and the parents didn't care. Yeah. Wow. Okay. 28% of street youth are trading sex for food and doing things that you wouldn't want your kids to be doing in order to survive. Right. Um, 63% of those youth are diagnosed with depression. 70% are considered in danger based on indicators of harm, such as substance misuse and untreated mental illness. Those are just a few other stats for you. Um, You know, to me, um, regardless of the reasons, they become homeless. Nobody wants to be in that situation. And we have a moral, it's a moral imperative and a social obligation to step in right. and, um, and help make change, drive change in their lives. Right. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very scary statistics. It is. And, and it's interesting when we talk about this in New Hampshire, we very often hear, what? No, not in New Hampshire. You know, wealthy state. And it's true. We care. We, we have small neighborhoods and this wonderful, you know, uh, spirit of volunteerism. It's such a wonderful state to live in. And we're always voted like number one or number two, best place to raise your right, children. Right, right. Yeah. You know, and it's true. Yeah. Um, doesn't mean there aren't still problems that happen. Right. And, right. and it's not because something has somebody has done something wrong in, in the systems or, you know, uh, that the state has misstepped in any way. It's really... Uh, the nature of the beast. Things happen. Every generation, there's new challenges that come up, new um, issues people face, whether it's economic issues that, uh, or, un, you know, long-term untreated mental illness, um, you know, the stigmas that go along with many of these problems. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, problems arise, and I really believe that they can best be solved when it's all hands on deck. Right. You know, and we right. all work together yeah. and not just leave it in the hands of the few nonprofits who are doing that work, but mm-hmm. really everybody just kind of link yes, arms exactly. and try to be part of the solution. Right. You know? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Get involved in some volunteer work. Really important. Yeah. yeah. Well, you alluded to it, uh, Kat, uh, earlier. And, you know, we always hear about how New Hampshire is such a great place to raise a family. But we also hear the other statistics about the opioid crisis as well. Yeah. And this is one of the hardest hit states in, in terms of the opioid crisis, uh, uh, I guess, per capita, the, the third uh, you know, state in the country in that regard. Ohio and West Virginia, I hear, are up there as well. Uh, I, and I'm sure that uh, certainly plays a large role in, in the homeless situation, both for youth and adults. Yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, and that's a tough one, too, for our youth. There's a real gap in services for them. There's no youth shelter. Um, We need to do a better job at um, helping youth to access those treatment services they need for substance misuse. Um, And there's a, again, there's a lot of stigma still about that issue as much as it's been in the news a lot, as well as with mental illness. And they kind of go hand in hand in many ways. Right. And people are proud. Yeah. And sometimes they'll feel shameful. So they don't want to reach out for help. They don't want to draw attention to themselves. Yeah. You know, especially if they went from, you know, being productive and then they end up uh, being hooked on drugs and mm-hmm. then they lose their job and then everything's just, you know, spiraling. Right. It snowballs from yes. there. It, it truly does. And, uh, yeah, we notice that, uh, again, it's, uh, it, you know, within families. I mean, you could take a situation. Okay, so say you have um, parental substance abuse and and family violence and poverty and the youth turns 18 and leaves and has no resources, no means by which to live on his or her own. And it, who knows what that young person is going to have to to do to survive. So let's say they get mixed up in dealing drugs or doing drugs to dull that pain. Mm-hmm. Um, and then suddenly they're, you know, they're couch hopping and what they're negotiating in order to get food for the next day or a place to sleep that night. 
Um, you know, even trying to get a job is going to be tough when you're homeless and you don't, you know, and you think about all those practical things and how it can snowball from there. And then if your untreated mental illness or substance misuse problem um, it continues to grow, it's harder Right. Um, to, you know, and, and it's harder to get into treatment. You don't have transportation. You don't have, you don't know what you're going to eat or where you're going to stay that night. So right. yeah, all many things, things that we take for right. granted that, right. you know, we have, you know, it's just every day right. becomes such a problem. Right. So if people want to reach out, what is your website and your phone number? It's waypointnh.org. That's the website. Waypointnh.org. That's, that's easy to remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and phone number, I'll give you the 800-600-6486. Okay, terrific. Yeah. Outstanding. Kat Strange is with us, uh, Director of communi- Communications for Waypoint. And uh, Coach Carol Phillips is here uh, with our health segment. And uh, Carol's the author of 52 Simple Ways to Health. And I don't know if there's another book on the way, but, uh, uh, you know. Hmm. Working on it. <laughs> Working on it. Yeah. Working on it. Working on it. Okay. I am. I am getting I know, there. I, I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. But you've been very busy. And uh, we'll be back to talk uh, more with Kat and also about uh, a great event uh, that is coming up in the not-too-distant future to uh, uh, benefit uh, some of the uh, homeless people that are in our community. And we'll talk about that and more as we continue on Kale & Company right here on 1077 The Pulse and 1073 WEMJ. 1077 The Pulse, 1073 WEMJ. It is our health segment with Coach Carol Phillips. Kat Strange is with us, Director of Communications for Waypoint. And, uh, I mean, it's located in Manchester, but, uh, Kat, I'm I'm sure you uh, serve folks from uh, outside of the Queen City as well. Oh, yeah. We have 14 offices around Mm. the state. Wow. So we have an office in Concord and Exeter and Lebanon and Keene. All over the place. North Country and Nashua. Oh, yeah. We're all over. North Country. Uh, That's really important. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, big footprint, statewide footprint, a little bit into Vermont as well. Uh Yes. Great. So um, I want to talk about your fifth annual sleep out. Mm. And I heard you're going to have um, a pretty well-known participant. Yeah. So tell us all about that. (laughs) All right. So the big announcement, Governor Sununu is sleeping out with us this year. Um, So to give you a little skinny on this, the sleep out is our special event where we raise funds and awareness about youth homelessness. Um, in New Hampshire, and uh, it's our way of getting another step closer to perhaps ending youth homelessness once and for all in the Granite State. Uh, so what it is, is it's uh, one night, it's March 22nd, um, and we spend the night outside. It is in no way designed to emulate homelessness. One night outside for us is not the same thing as, as truly being homeless. It is simply a chance for people to sort of raise their community consciousness about the plight of homeless youth and to really just kind of think and reflect and feel the sort of spirit of one another and come together in solidarity um, to raise awareness about this issue, which, as we discussed before, is rather pervasive. And um, and yet most people are kind of in denial about, you know, just don't really believe that it's happening here. Yeah. Right. And it's um, important you're not doing it in the middle of summer when no, it's nice and no. warm, right? We, we want it to be snowing yeah. and exactly. we want it to be cold. <laughs> yes. And, you know, because you know what? The governor can withstand that. He That's can. Right. Yeah. He's a tough guy. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. And so, it really makes people think more about what yeah. homeless people are dealing with. Right. Right. And so, you know, we... Uh, We'll probably have about 100 sleepers, and, wow. or 150, maybe, perhaps. And, Is there um, much sleep that goes on during <laughs> No, this? not really. Not, although it's really funny. Sometimes yeah. you'll hear somebody snoring, and the rest of us are like, how can that person be sleeping? Right. You know? But, uh, you know, people just bring sleeping bags. It's an open-air tent, mm-hmm. um, and uh, we just put some cardboard down on the ground, and that's all you get. There's no amenities. It's just right there. It's right down in front of the double tree um, in Manchester. It's called Stanton Plaza. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, we venture outside uh, at uh, a little after 10 p.m., and uh, then at about the crack of dawn, we go back in for a little reflection and fellowship. Um, and each person who is sleeping out gets their own personal fundraising, web-based fundraising tool. Um, and we're using CrowdRise for that. And, uh, you know, it's where they could just set up their own fundraising page, send their friends the link and say, here, could you please sponsor or support my effort? And and that's how we raise the money. Yes. And so, this year. Oh, sorry. Go on. Oh, no, no. I was just going to say this year we're um, 
introducing something new because we realized not everybody can be in downtown Manchester on March 22nd. So we thought, let's let people go rogue. Mm-hmm. And sleep out in their own backyards. Or That's what I was just campuses. about to ask you about. <laughs> yeah. Great minds. Uh, but, you know, you could get a group of employees and perhaps your company parking lot will allow you to just sure. set up there yeah. at yes. night and just That's spend the night outside. Idea. And you can still raise money the same way. We'll live stream you in. So uh-huh. you get to see the presentations that are happening and still feel a part of it. You get that experiential uh, sense. But, uh, you know, you're in, in your own backyard. Um, wow. Doing the good work, so good work can happen from anywhere. That's that's a great event for corporate America, right? Yeah, yeah. to promote yep. to their employees. Oh yeah, yeah. And we do have a number of businesses who've developed sleep teams, you know, and yeah, yeah. They uh, they they kind of uh, drive up that competitive spirit. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. That's, that's really wonderful. Great. Yeah, no. that's great. So, how do people find out more about that? Well, they can go to waypointnh.org. And you'll see a little pop-up right on the home page that says Sleep Out. And uh, you go there. It gives you all the who, what, when, where, why, and how. Um, you can register to sleep out there. Or you perhaps you'll see a sleeper you know, such as the governor. Um, and you can support that sleeper. Terrific. Terrific. Yeah. And, and it is a, a major fundraiser from what I, I read in the press release. Yeah, yeah. We are hoping to raise 350000 Dollars this year, we raised wow. about three hundred and seven thousand last year. So, wow. uh, so I think it's doable. That's terrific. Um, and and Granite Staters are just amazing. Uh, when we tell them this story, uh, they really step up, you know, and uh, they they want to help our kids. Nobody wants to think of anybody and see think of anybody who's you know young and struggling out there, um, you know, against all odds. This is our chance to make an impact, yes, and drive that change. And what what specifically um, does Waypoint do to help homeless youth? Yeah, so we have a continuum of services uh, for youth who are experiencing homelessness. So in Manchester on Lincoln Street, we have the Youth Resource Center, which is a drop in center uh, where youth can come during the day for all, to get all their basic needs met. Essentially, uh, they can take showers there. Uh, there's a clothing closet a food pantry, they can get a hot meal, um, you know, they, they can get counseling there and a lot of guidance and emotional support um, and get warmth, of course. Um, it, they also get to participate in other, you know, sort of positive youth development activities. Um, you know, so aside from the basic needs, though, we also help them with things like um, job skills training and job hunting, um, helping them finish their high school equivalency, uh, get into college, uh, get transportation, get their license, you know, get all their paperwork in order, um, you know, uh, just help them just connect all, all the dots. All those life skills All that the they dots you're talking about <laughs> that uh, constitute adulthood and right. independence, you know. And, uh, it, you know, if they are struggling with substance misuse, you know, we can um, help them with access to treatment. Um, it, you know, and then when they get to be a certain age, they qualify for our transitional living program. Uh, which is we have houses throughout, we have a house actually in Concord, um, houses throughout the state that um, where youth who are formerly homeless can stay for a period of time to gain their independence, um, build their life skills. Um, They have to either be working or in school or a little of both. Um, And so we call that the Transitional Living Program. Um, And we also have a street outreach program, which... Um, you'd probably see if you go to downtown Manchester any given night, about 30 hours a week, we have a street team and they're wearing blue jackets that say outreach on them. And they're going out looking for youth who are at risk Mm -hmm. and sort of offering that lifeline. Mm -hmm. They become the lifeline. Getting the information because I'm sure some of them have no idea what's available to them. None, none at all. And they, they give them a little card that, you know, gives them the number to call and, um, you know, it. It could be uh, emergency services, crisis services, or anything else that these youth may need, basic needs, food, Mm -hmm. you know, um, whatever it is that they need, we can help connect them to that. So this is true boots on the ground. Um, This is our street team, and we call that the Street Outreach Program. On the seacoast, we have a mobile unit. And so we have a van out there that 
goes up and down, as you can imagine. It's you know pretty big coastal community, yeah. and uh, right. and uh, they drive around uh, delivering those essentials and serving as a lifeline to youth on the seacoast area. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's really a continuum that is unique in New Hampshire. There's a lot of great organizations doing a lot of great work, and and we may touch the same populations in certain ways, but there's no other duplication of this this kind of. Mm-hmm. you know, continuum mm-hmm. of services. A couple of weeks ago, I was talking to one of the great folks from Families in Transition. Mm-hmm. And um, we were talking about, you know, when the, you know, when you see the panhandlers and, you know, they are, we're trying to educate the public on, you know, don't give them money, you know, um, because that might make it worse, you know, if they're going to use it for drugs, et cetera. And a person in the conversation said, um, I had heard that, you know, like, for example, if I went out to eat, and I got an extra meal, what's wrong with me going down and giving it to somebody who's homeless? Mm. And it was a great education experience because the person kind of enlightened us that the problem is when you keep um, helping them in that way, they don't always come for for help, where then they're going to have access to other services. Mm. So, you yeah. know, whereas yeah. if they come, you know, like to New Horizons or Families in Transition, you know, for they're coming in for a meal, then they can get information on all the other services that can help them get off the street. Right. Yeah. And it's it's a tough one because it's human nature. Yes. You know, we see the problem. We want to help, um, you know, help that person. And, uh, you know, very often it's it ends up being more enabling the problem to continue as opposed to changing the direction right. of that life right. and you know and a- instead of feeding the need we need to think more in terms of solving the problem right. that creates that need in the first place absolutely so yeah. yeah that makes total sense yeah even though it's hard so if people want to do something right they go to the volunteer route mm-hmm. you know that in the long run can be a lot more helpful yeah. yeah i mean there's so many ways you can help not everybody can donate money yes um you can sleep out and other people can donate money go. to you. Yeah. Right. You could always do that. Um, so you can participate in that way, volunteer. Lots of organizations are looking for mentors, tutors, you know, things like that. Um, but, you know, also if you're a business owner, you know, perhaps think in terms of how can you perhaps take someone under your wing? Um, you know, someone who probably doesn't have a lot of training in any area, no skills yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but they have dreams, you know, for these youth. Their stories are not finished yet, you know. Right. so. Uh, let's not just walk away because, you know, we think, okay, we gave them a granola bar and a Hot Pocket and yeah. our work is done here for the day. It's not. No. Right. Uh, you know, we're trying to change the trajectory of these lives, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, community members, you know, leaders, legislators, business owners can all be a part of that in their own way, whether it's shaping public policies, creating laws to protect these youth and, and help sustain services to them. Um, or, you know, rolling up your sleeves and getting involved with a good nonprofit that's doing the work out there. Right. So, yeah. It's all connected. It's Waypoint that uh, we're talking about, and Cat Strange is with us, the Director of Communications for that great organization formerly known as Child and Family Services. Coach Carol Phillips in the house as well. If you have any uh, questions, comments, views, give us a call, 866-823-1077. It is 12.45. We'll take a break. Kale and Company continues right here on 1077 The Pulse and 1073 WEMJ. 1077 The Pulse, 1073 WEMJ, two of America's great radio stations. And uh, we're joined today by our health coach, Carol Phillips, and Kat Strange, who is the uh, director of communications for Waypoint, which is all over the state and even into Vermont, uh, formerly Child and uh, Family Services. How long you've been? Have you been uh, Waypoint? How long have I been there? Well, how oh. how long has Waypoint been around? Oh uh, well, uh, Waypoint. Well, you know, our agency was born in 1850. Yeah, um, we're the oldest children's charitable organization in New Hampshire, as right. a matter of fact. So we got some deep roots. Uh, we've been Child and Family for the past 50 years, right. and then just since November of last year, we changed our oh, name to okay. Waypoint. Okay, so it's, so it's less than a year, yeah, much less than yeah. a year. Yeah, now okay. I've been with the organization for a little over 20 years now. Wow. And I have to say, a lot has changed in our social landscape in that wow. time. Oh, what, what's, the what, yeah. what's, what's the what's biggest change? What's the biggest change? change? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, our growing senior population 
Yes. Our growing senior population now, you know, most people think of us as, you know, being the child-focused agency, which we are focused on children, but our fastest growing program is for seniors. Really? Yeah. You know, yeah. and of course with baby boomers, you know, that's... <laughs> well, I'm glad yeah. seniors are hanging around yeah, longer. Yeah, you know? we're living longer. We're not... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the population's exploding. Yeah. For the seniors. Yeah. As they so say, a silver the needs tsunami. are growing. Right? Yes. Silver tsunami. Yeah. Yes. And then with the dementia and, you know, the other challenges that they face. And... Yeah. Well, and you know, I mean, let's face it, you know, you work so hard all your life and you you want to stay in your own home, the life yes. you built for yourself, you know, for as long as you can. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, again, I think it's a moral imperative, you know, to help our seniors um, to maintain good quality of life and, um, you know, on their own terms, in their own homes, as long as it's safe for them to do so. Yes. And, you know, I run into people who they didn't realize, you know, they ended up taking a parent, in, an elderly parent in, and they're trying to do everything themselves. Mm -hmm. And they had no idea that there were services available mm -hmm. where they could have people come in and help with them. Yeah. So getting that yeah. word out is really important. Yeah. Yeah. Really important. And, and, you know, I mean, we were talking about how our agency serves every age and stage of life. Um, if people often ask me, what is my favorite program? And it's sort of like watching Friends. You know, it's like you see a good ensemble and every time, you know, Rachel comes out, oh, she's my favorite. And Ross comes out, oh, he's my favorite. And Monica comes out, oh, she's my favorite. You know, right. it's kind of like that with our programs. And I tell somebody about one of our programs, like, oh, that's a fabulous program. And then I hear myself talking about another one. Oh, that's an amazing program. Yeah. You know, it's that's great. It's such I just love the work that we do. And it is such a passionate, skilled amazing group of people who are doing this work. Um, I, I have to say the Waypoint staff is, I mean, it's just amazing. Um, I bow to the social workers every day. Being out there doing that, that's tough stuff. Right, right. And very often it's a thankless job. Right. And it's stuff most people probably wouldn't want to do mm -hmm. and couldn't do. It takes a special kind of person to do it. Um, someone with a real stamina, a strength of will, um, and a, a whole lot of wisdom and skill. Uh, you know, they're very well trained and educated. Um, but boy, they really have to be committed to this yes, cause. Very compassionate. Yeah. And I actually yeah. know I'm good friends with one of your employees yeah. and I'll give her a little shout out. Hi, Cheryl. Yeah. And she is just amazing. I met her when she was helping with my mom mm -hmm. and we've stayed friends and now she works for Waypoint yeah. and she is amazing. Yeah. So yeah, yeah they, they are very, very special people. Thank you. Very good, good to hear. <laughs> so how, how do people find out uh, for the most part about Waypoint? Are they referred by someone or uh, yeah. how, how do you market yourself? Yeah. Well, you know, as we were discussing before, um, a lot of our programs are court referred programs. Okay. So you don't market those in the traditional way right. one would think. I mean, yeah. we're not out there buying billboards and right. advertisements really. Right. Um, it's really more um, the relationships we have with the state um, and with those referring sources, whether it's um, child protective social workers, juvenile uh, protection and parole officers, um, law enforcement, you know, the courts. Um, so a lot of our referrals come to us that way. Um, but otherwise, it's really just being out there in the community through our events. People find out about us sure. and, and, you know, raises awareness and, um, you know, level of interest in the work that we do and the kinds of pro the scope and magnitude of the programs we mm -hmm. have. Um, but you know, it's, it's a lot of word of mouth. I mean, yeah. let's face it, nonprofits don't have a lot of money to sky right, True. <laughs> right. True. you know, yeah. to buy advertising. So we do things like, you know, these wonderful interviews and, um, you know, try to, to spread the words in a, in a very grassroots sort of way. Yeah. Well, it's great that all these organizations are, are working together. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. The partnerships are really key and that's kind of how we fuel each other's fire, you know. And there's not a lot of duplication of services there either. It's where one leaves off, the other one picks up, mm -hmm. you know. Nice. Uh, someone may serve uh, people only up to a certain age, and then the next organization kicks in, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Right. That's great. There's yeah. the continuum so work, of yep. care there. Yeah. So we can work in tandem and create that true social safety net. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what is Camp Spalding? Oh, Camp Spalding. Oh, see, there it is. Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Camp Spalding. Uh, uh, we knew it was your Camp favorite. Spalding? I, I did. I... In home care, that's my favorite yeah. too. But um, Camp Spalding is uh, a summer camp out at Pennacook, and we actually uh, are working in partnership with the YMCA of Greater Nashua. 
uh, now on Camp Spalding. Uh, we own the camp. It's mm-hmm. 55 acres along the Kentuckic River in wow. Pennacook. It's beautiful. Nice. It's all forested and, uh, you know, right along the K- Kentuckic. And, yep. um, and the YMCA, because, I mean, that's what they do. They know recreational programming. They do all the you know, they run the show during the summer. They do all the, the programs and, and um, you know, the curriculum for, for summer camp. So we have an equine program where kids get to learn to ride horses and to bond with the horses and groom the horses and all wow. that. Uh, they can swim, learn archery, go canoeing and kayaking along the Kentuckic. Uh There's field games. There's talent shows that they have, uh, wilderness programs. Um, it's That's an terrific. amazing summer camp. And our organization has the great good fortune of um, getting camper, we call them camper ships, but it's camp scholarships uh, from our donors um, to enable children from low-income families to attend mm-hmm. who okay. never would be able to go if not for these mm-hmm. camper ships. Wow. So, mm-hmm. yeah. That's yeah. terrific. What, and, what a great opportunity that yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Two right. weeks of residential summer camp. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is really something. Yeah. And usually it's those young girls who just love the time with the horses. You know, oh. they just, they bond and they yeah. connect. And... Well, it's very funny when I go up to take photos of them every summer. It's one of my favorite things to do, <laughs> favorite parts of my job. Um, the people who who uh, are working there and the trainers with the horses and so forth said, this is like the only time that these kids are actually quiet yeah. <laughs> when they're around the horses because they're around these majestic. It's so calming. Yeah. yeah. It's very calming. And, and, and it's, it's therapeutic yes. in a lot of ways. They, they build a trust and a bond mm-hmm. uh, with these magnificent animals. And yeah, it's an amazing program. That's terrific. Yeah. And, and that's the kind of a program. I mean, uh, two weeks doesn't seem like very much, but it's, it's enough really, uh, I think, to, to change the lives of, uh, of, I'm sure, many of these youngsters that go. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. and you hear about people saying that, you know, they built lifelong friendships yeah. with yeah. people that they met at camp. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so. uh, yeah. Memories to last a lifetime for sure. Very yeah. good. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, skills or uh, opportunities they, they have there that they wouldn't get anywhere else, uh, really. Yeah. I mean, you know, archery is great, but, they, you know, normally you, you don't have a chance to shoot a bow and arrow. Exactly. Or ride a horse or, right. or do right. any of those things. Right. You know? Yeah. Canoe, whatever it is. Yeah. 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 Just great. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. And be outside. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, so the website is Waypoint waypointnh.org. Yeah. Okay. Waypointnh.org. You can find out about all of our programs and services, um, you know, where they are, um, you know, what the eligibility requirements are. If you want to make a referral, you can do that through the website. If you need to talk with someone, you know, the phone numbers are there. Um you know, pretty much whatever you need. And, of course, links to our special event pages if you wanted to register to sleep out with us. Yes. <laughs> it's a great website. Should you choose to. The 800 number is right there. Yeah. You know, in the upper right-hand corner, as soon as you get on the website, and like Kat was saying, there's a pop-up as soon as you go on the website for the sleep out. Yep. Um, so, Kat, thank you so much for being <gasps> with you. us today. Um, best of luck with everything. Great information. Uh, so people get out there and, and volunteer and join your community and i have a closing quote today and it's by gandhi and it's the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others and coach carol i will be back on thursday may 14th at one o'clock one o'clock march 14th not may 14th i'm sorry did i say